Hello and welcome everyone, very happy that we are all together again. In this tutorial we will start talking about the open circuit fault. So fasten your belt and let's get started. The aim of this tutorial is to learn about the open circuit fault to understand why it's a problem and what does it cause and we will do the job with an example. So let's go ahead. First of all if you remember what we illustrated before was about the short circuit fault and we knew the common sense of its danger as it produces a larger current that can turn the electric circuit different components. For example, if we have that line to line fault, we will find the two lines to be connected together, so the total resistance is only the line resistance which causes a larger current. And the same thing if the line wire is touching the neutral wire, this produces an excessive current to move through the conductors which burns the different components of the electric circuit. So that's about the idea of the short circuit fault condition which makes it to be a problem. Now the other type of faults we have is the open circuit fault type. Here the open circuit fault condition is caused by many factors like the case at which the fuse explodes or to be damaged. So if we have a fuse that is used for protection which connects the two conductors together. Now if there is an increase in the current through the circuit, this causes the fuse to explode which cuts the circuit. So when the circuit is cut, this makes the circuit to be open as you see here. But for the first glance you say that there is no problem now as the circuit is just open and there will be no following power so this is just the problem. But in fact this is not right for the transmission system of the power as if the circuit becomes open this produces a great increase in the voltage that is applied to the different components of the circuit and when the voltage increases to a larger value than the design value that the circuit components can withstand so this will produce a failure in the insulation for the different components like the insulations of the cables and the transformer. But we need now to know a very important thing which is that what is the reason that causes the voltage to increase when the circuit becomes open. Here to answer that question we can discuss that example. Suppose we have a power source that has a voltage of 16 kV and through the circuit there is an inductance that has an impedance of 4800 ohms and a capacitance that has an impedance of 800 ohms. Now we need to know what will be the voltage across each component of them. So the first step to do is to calculate the total impedance of the circuit and the total impedance equals the impedance of the inductor plus the impedance of the capacitor. And because the inductor impedance is an inductive reactance so we will add it with a positive sign here to P positive J4800 and as the capacitance impedance is a capacitive reactance so we will add it with a negative sign here and for that it will be J4800 minus J3200 which produces a total impedance of the circuit of about J1600 ohm. Now after calculating the impedance we need to calculate the current passing through the circuit from the power source to the lines. And here the current equals the voltage over the total impedance, so it's 16 thousands over 1600 which equals 10 amperes. And this means there will be a total current of 10 amperes that is passing through the circuit. Very good. Now we are ready to calculate the voltage across the two elements we have, the capacitor and the inductor. So the voltage across each of them equals the current passing through each of them times the impedance of each of them. And for that the voltage across the inductor equals the current which is 10 amperes times the inductive reactance which is 4800. Hence it produces a total value of the voltage across the inductor of about 48 k volts. And by the same way to calculate the voltage across the capacitor it will be the capacitive reactance times the current. So it's 3200 times 10 amperes which produces 32 k volts. So the voltage across the capacitor now is 32 k volts. But the problem now is that the voltage across each element of them is larger than the source voltage. For example the voltage across the inductor equals the source voltage 3 times. 
as it's 48 while the source voltage is only 60. But the problem is that the electric circuit components are designed to withstand the source voltage, not that larger voltage across each element of the circuit. And in that case, this produces a damage for the different components of the circuit, like the break of the conductor insulation. But you can ask now, what is the relation between that example and the open circuit fault, as you don't see any open circuit condition at that case? So the answer is that this example shares one property with the open circuit condition. And this property is that the open circuit looks like that condition here, as both of them has an inductor and a capacitor in series like that case here. And when they are in series and when they are having a large impedance like that case here, there will be a great voltage across each component of them, which produces a failure in the system. Very good. Now the next question is that how can we get that characteristic for the open circuit condition? So to know how that condition is achieved at the open circuit condition, let's discuss an example. Suppose we have this three phase circuit with those three phase power sources, then we have some transmission lines, then we have a three phase inductance. And for each line of those lines, there is a capacitive represented between the transmission line and the earth. Now for the normal case with no fault, the three circuits will be closed here. And as you see, the circuit is closed. And this means the power is going forward from the source as the current is passing through the transmission lines. Now at the normal case with no fault, the three circuits are closed. And as you see, the switches are closed and the current is passing through the transmission lines. And for that, there is no leakage current that is passing through the capacitance of any phase of the three phases. So the voltage across each capacitor is small, which means that the voltage across the circuit components is smaller than the source voltage. So there is no problem at that condition. But now suppose there is an open circuit in the third phase of the circuit. So the third switch is open now for any reason. And at that case, there will be no current that is passed through the circuit due to the open circuit condition. But there will be a current that is passing from the capacitor to the source again. And at that case, the capacitance that is produced at the open circuit condition is called the stray capacitance. And it's produced between the transmission lines and the ground. And at that case, the voltage across the inductance and the capacitance of the circuit is large, which is larger than the source voltage. Exactly like the previous example where we have a capacitance like that one on the previous case and we have an inductance like that one on the previous case also. So the voltage across them is larger for that case that is larger than the source voltage which produces finally a break in the insulation for the different components of the circuit like the cables or the transformers. More than great. So that's about this tutorial at which we explain the open circuit fault condition. How that's clear right now. Thank you for watching and see you next tutorials.